Back in September, we did an episode on rethinking COVID testing. We emphasize the importance of widely available, affordable, quick result tests that might be less accurate than the PCR test, but would make much more headway in the fight to curb the spread of COVID-19. Now, almost a year into the pandemic, we finally have a cheap at-home option to test for the virus. That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. So it seems that we're finally going to have some at-home testing option for COVID-19. On December 15th, the FDA issued an emergency use authorization for the first COVID-19 test that can be purchased without a prescription and performed entirely at home. The test was developed by the Australian-based company Illum with the help of a $30 million grant from the NIH. It'll run somewhere around $30 for you and can be used in anyone age 2 and above, delivering results in about 15 minutes to you at home. It comes with a sterile nasal swab, a dropper, processing fluid, and an electronic analyzer that connects to your phone via Bluetooth. The test works with the free app that provides instructions for using the test, including a video, and the app is where your results are displayed at the end. The app requires users to input their zip code and date of birth, with name and email address being optional. The company's website mentions the use of a secure cloud connection that enables real-time reporting of results so that data can be shared as necessary with public health authorities monitoring COVID-19 prevalence. This test uses lateral flow technology, which is common in at-home medical diagnostic tests, including pregnancy tests. Essentially, a liquid sample runs along the surface of a pad with molecules on it that'll react to a target substance. In pregnancy tests, that target substance is a hormone. In a Loom's test, it's fragments of proteins of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. In the case of the Illum test, the electronic analyzer detects and analyzes fluorescent nanoparticle signals transmitting its analysis to your phone. Illum reports that their tests demonstrate 95% sensitivity and 97% specificity. Specifically, in individuals with COVID-19 symptoms, they report a sensitivity of 96% and a specificity of 100%. And in asymptomatic individuals, they report a sensitivity of 91% and specificity of 96%. Like any other test, there's going to be false positives and false negatives. This isn't ideal, of course, especially for symptomatic individuals who test negative, but no test is perfect. The FDA recommends that anyone receiving a positive result follow up with their healthcare provider and that anyone experiencing symptoms but testing negative does the same. Now, tests won't be widely available right away, but the company plans to ramp up production in the new year, shipping around 100,000 tests per day. They plan to manufacture and deliver 20 million tests in the United States in the first half of next year. This may sound like a commercial for this test, and I don't want that to be true. We would do the same for any test coming on the market that fulfills these criteria. This one just happens to be first. And of course, a lot of the numbers I've said are in perfect conditions. They also depend on how well people use the test, and in the real world, they might not be that good. Until vaccination becomes widespread, which might take a while, we've still got to be vigilant about curbing the spread of COVID-19. Many public health experts have long advocated for investment in cheaper, easier tests to help with these efforts. While this would have certainly been useful to have many months ago, it's still better late than never. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this other episode with Dr. Kate O'Brien from the WHO on vaccines. We'd also appreciate if you might like or subscribe down below and think about going to patreon.com slash healthcare triage, where you can help make the show bigger and better, even during a global pandemic. We'd like to especially thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sebitz, Josh Gister, and Michael Chin, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral Sam.